affairs now known as focus zones are vital aspects of implementing a focus program at your school. In this video, you'll learn the basics of how to plan a health fair at your school. You'll also hear real stories and examples from former and current focus facilitators. Focus health fairs are now called focus zones because we don't want participants to just come and pick up information, our kids pick up candy and then pass on to the next booth. We want them to get valuable information that they can use. So we're asking vendors to introduce high energy activities that will keep the students engaged and interested throughout the entire event. A health fair is a very valuable service to your school, not only to the school, but to the community as a whole, and can be an exciting and rewarding experience for everyone. A health fair also engages your focus students. How? It gets them engaged, they learn leadership skills, they learn to network with community agencies, probably some agencies that they did not know exist in their community. They're able to share practical and valuable health information. Even though we want them to get the brochures, we want them to read it, we want them to take it home and share it with their parents, that's some very valuable information. And then they can market their focus program and showcase what they're doing at their schools. They can do this at health fairs. Okay. Also, health fairs promote wellness by emphasizing the practice of good health habits. So we go to health fairs and we pick up a brochure and we can speak to someone at that health fair about healthy lifestyles. It provides your community with a variety of health education information, resources to increase awareness and prevention, and then we're able to utilize healthcare professionals. They like to come to our health fairs. Dental like to come to our health fairs. And they bring um, not only information, but they do screenings and they do them for free. These would be blood pressure screenings. They could be cholesterol screening or even glucose screenings. Ms. Kara shared the story earlier about the young lady who had an elevated blood pressure at school. Probably never would have known that had it not been for that health fair. And not only that, they do referrals and they do follow up at, excuse me, as necessary. But it's also a way for your students to connect. Remember, the whole focus of focus is to develop school and community partnerships. So when these vendors or exhibitors come to our school, they are able to develop those partnerships and enable us to carry out our focus mission. Um, but in order to have a successful health fair, you have to plan for that. As Sue already mentioned, this information is on the website in the implementation guide. And we're going to talk about those things as we go on. Okay. okay, so six months in advance, you want to consider your preliminary planning. So once you get your focus program organized, when you get back to school this fall and you decide of some things that you want to do, you may say, well, we want to have a health fair. So that'll be a great time to go on and start. Many of the health fairs that I participated in or assisted in organizing is usually somewhere around the spring, somewhere around March or April. So when you get back to school and if you're looking at six months out, that'll be a really good time to start planning your health fair. You want to appoint at least seven, at least seven members on your planning committee to include students, counselors, and of course your school nurse. You want to select a student to serve as your health fair share, uh, chair. Decide when and where you want to have your health fair. So when you want to have it, and then where are you going to have this health fair at? And if you're going to have it on campus, of course, you need to get approval from administrators, but that should be student-led. Decide on a focus area. And we have some information in the implementation guide as well, but you also want to market your event. And this is how you're going to promote it flyers, media, social media, television, newspaper. And then you want to schedule your planning meetings so that everybody know when the next meeting will be. Assign student-led committees specific duties. So when you're, giving, when you're assigning these students or the individuals to these committees, it's very important that they know specifically what their duties are. You want to coordinate exhibitors, service providers, and that's in ex, um, exhibit D and E. That's who you're going to invite. Select two of your most responsible students. 
And I'm sure you would know who your students are that's most responsible. Those are who you want to utilize. And then you want to coordinate publicity. As I stated, how are you going to promote the event? You don't want to have an event without promoting it. You want people to come. You want them to participate in it. So you want to get the word out. And you want to coordinate hospitality. This could be the greeters, who's going to make your vendors feel welcome. But it also could be refreshments that you're going to provide. Budget may be limited, so it'll be a great time to consider who can donate um, maybe money or who can donate refreshments. Okay? And then you also want to have a cleanup crew. And this is everybody. Everybody wants to participate in um, cleanup. And these are some suggested providers. This is just a very small list, but you need to know who's in your area. Um, there's a probably two-page list that's listed in the implementation guide that you can select from, but you may not have what I have in my area. I may not have what you have in your area. So when you're planning, you want to decide who you want to participate in your health fair, and then you want to go on and con contact those individuals. You want to send a follow-up letter to confirm. So you're going to send a letter initially to invite them. And then two months out, send them a letter just to remind them and to confirm that um, the date of the event. Find out what they need. Do they need one table? Do they need two tables? Do they need chairs? Do they need electrical? What is it that they need? You want to develop flyers to inform parents and community of the health fair develop your news releases. And as Carol mentioned earlier, you have some students that kind of want to work behind the scene. You have some that love social media, some that love developing flyers. So those are the ones that you want to use for this activity. And then you want to check with your school district to request the use of equipment, but at the same time making sure that you have adequate equipment in order to um, meet your needs. If you don't have adequate equipment, you may want to secure them from some other organization. If you realize I need 12 tables, only have 10, then I know I need to get two more tables from somewhere else. You want to provide the custodian or whoever the person is that will be assisting you in setting up with a layout so they'll know exactly how the table should be arranged. You want to recruit volunteers, and your volunteers could be teachers, of course, students to help you. Plan refreshments such as your nutritional bars, coffee, juice, or you may want to consider a light lunch. Consider your budget. What do you have? Do you have money to purchase these things? And if not, you may want to look at other vendors that can provide donations. And then you want to check to ensure all um, equipment requirement can be met. And as I said earlier, if it cannot be, you want to look at some other organization, maybe the county or some other organization that can loan you tables. And in some of the health fairs that we've done, we've asked individuals to bring their own tables because most exhibitors have a small table that they can bring anyway. And then you want to distribute your health fair flyers to parents, to the community. You want to also consider um, other places that you're going to promote the event, whether it's social media, um, whether it's television, radio, or what have you. And then you want to go on and prepare your signs. And those are going to be signs advertising the vendors that are going to be coming to the event. So we're down to the day of the health fair. And this is, can be a very fun time if you have everything organized, then it could be not so fun if you don't have everything organized. You want to arrive early. And what is early to you? It really depends on how big your health fair is. If you're having a huge health fair with a lot of vendors and you have an audio equipment, you may want to arrive two hours in advance. You know, But if you have it a small and everything is set up, then you may want to arrive an hour in advance. Now, if you have an audio, a visual, or electrical equipment that's going to be used, be sure to check that the day before because that gives you time to troubleshoot it if anything is wrong. You want to have name tags um, available for exhibitors, just like we had it laid out for you guys when you came in today to register. You want to make sure that the hospitality area is in order. You want to make sure it's neat. You want to make sure it's clean and well stocked. And have your focus students wearing their focus t-shirts to go out and meet and greet your vendors and to assist them with bringing in their material. Have volunteers and exhibitors to provide um, 
to, to sign a sign-in sheet and you want to get their addresses and getting their addresses is very important because at the end you want to send them a thank you letter. And then periodically check with the exhibitors. You can do it yourself or have your students to do it. Just go in and check and see how they're doing. Do they need anything? Do they need water? Do they need refreshment? And have the focus of uh, students to assist with this or your volunteers. And then at the end of the day, you want to thank your exhibitors for their attendance and ask them to complete an evaluation form. The evaluation form is very important because it tells you how you did, and then you can find out if there's something that you need to change or add in order to have a successful health fair at your next um, health fair. And definitely you want to clean up the facility. You want to leave it as good or better than it was before you found it. Okay? And publicity is very important. And you want to make pictures. So you may have your focus students with their cameras to make pictures, which would be great for the school newspaper, for press release, and for a yearbook. But we also want to post it to focus uh, social media. And here's our focus connect. Hashtag Alabama Focus, the uh, Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram. After the health fair, as I stated, it's very important to collect and tabulate the evaluations. The evaluations are very important. You want feedback from your health fair, especially if it's your first health fair. It's a learning experience for both you and your students, so you want to get feedback. And then, as I stated, you want to send thank you letters. All this is in your implementation guide. So you'll have sample letters. When you complete your letters, we want you to please use the focus letterhead when you send those letters out. And to wrap up what I said, if you have any questions, you can ask those, but the key to having a successful health fair is planning early. So if you feel like, well, when, I, when you get your, pro, your focus program started, you're gonna have um, your students involved and you wanna have a health fair, go on and start planning for that. Go on and start thinking about what vendors you're going to invite. The students that are gonna be involved, your teachers, your volunteers, but making sure that everyone understands specifically what it is that they are supposed to be doing to assist in the health fair. You want to invite vendors that are resourceful, but you also want to remember five, okay? Fun, interactive, and very energetic. That's what our focus um, health fairs are called now. We're now called the focus zones, and you will have that logo that you can use for your flyers. You want to advertise early, and consider eye-catching flyers, not just black and white flyers, consider pictures, something that will catch the person's eye when they're looking at that flyer to say, oh yeah, I wanna participate in this, or I wanna know more about this. Secure adequate equipment, whether it's through the school, or if you have to borrow equipment from some other source, you wanna consider that. And as I stated, refreshments, if you have funds to purchase those, if not, you may wanna ask vendors if they would donate and con collecting your roster or your sign-in sheet with addresses because, as I stated, you want to send thank you letters. That let them know that you appreciate them for participating. They'll have your contact information, and then you may want to invite them back another year. And then clean up the area. Um, definitely don't want to go into an area and not clean it up because they may not want you to come back again. Okay. And we have Xavier Kidd that's here. He's been with us all day. He's in the back. He was the um, person that led health fairs, we want to stand up, at the B.B. Connor um, High School. And his facilitator is Robin Whittem? Whittington. Whittington, is that you? OK. And so he's the guru of health fairs. And if you have any questions for him, you can speak with him afterwards. But we're excited that he's with us as well. He's coming up? OK. I think he's going to come up and speak. Is, is there any questions? Are there any questions at all about health fairs? Yes, ma'am. Do you invite the community to the health fairs? We do. OK, mm -hmm. so it's not just for the students? No. Okay. No. And that really depends on your school. But the ones that I've helped, we invite the parents and other community because we post the, help, the flyers in the community at community-based organizations, and we encourage the community to participate. Mm -hmm. okay. 
And I can also assist you if you decide that you want to have a health fair. I can also assist you in coordinating the health fairs. T-Y-D-E-B-R-A-3 at AOL.com. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ty Deborah 3. T-Y Deborah 3 at AOL.com. And I know Sue is going to send that information. It's on the. We've got it on the. Yeah. Do you know during the school day or after school? Normally. Okay. Normally it's during the school day, but it really depends on the school. The school may decide they want to have it on a Saturday. We have done some health fairs on Saturdays um, in some of our counties. So it really depends on what you all decide. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, I'm gonna turn it over to Sue. Thank you. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, this is kind of being put on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, first, uh, I wanna thank Ms. Sue Jones and Ms. Uh, Sprayberry for working with us um, at B.B. Comer Memorial High School in Sylacauga. Uh, Ms. Whittington, who is the former counselor of B.B. Comer, she is now at Lincoln High School uh, this year. Um, so we both left. <laughs> I just recently graduated high school this past year, and so Ms. Uh, Emmanuel will be taking over as facilitator at B.B. Comer. I will be going to Jacksonville State University this year in the fall. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be a secondary education major uh, in mathematics, so, I, uh, so I'll be where you are in a few years. <laughs> but um, uh, to uh, piggyback off of health fairs, uh, we started two years ago. Um, Ms. Jones kind of said, you know, you might not want to start your first year, but as myself, I am an overachiever, like to do great and big things at our school because I want to see my school go to new levels and new heights. Uh, we started out our first year. We have it always the first Friday in April. Uh, it was a very, very successful health fair. We had um, a lot of vendors come out. But the second year we had it, we had triple and even more vendors than we had the first year. Um, we had invited the community out. We got press release. We got everything out. Um, this year we had, we've done focus for each month, something different for each month. But planning a health fair is so awesome. And you don't have to do it um, all on your own. Miss Whittington, she probably didn't do nothing, but just. <laughs> 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 Only thing she did was I said, Miss Whittington, can I use your printer to print out? Yes, Davis, you can use my printer to print out stuff. So it was. Um, because I served as the president for the past two years, and so I, um, I, I said, um, can I use your printer? And I will always come in her office saying, can I use your computer? Can I use your printer? <laughs> uh, so she was, very, she was a resource that I always used to print stuff out <laughs> or to get in contact with um, some people using her office phone as the guidance counselor. Um, it was really student-led. Uh, we set up different committees. We had students, um, committee chairpersons. Uh, we had committees. Uh, they'd done their different jobs, roles, as the you know, as they talked about public relations, um, cleanup crew, and um, something that we did, which wasn't um, talked about, is that we get we gave out a schedule to all teachers, uh, to the administrator, office staff. Um, to everybody so they know what's going on because you know sometimes we have something going on and somebody say oh I didn't know about it we gave you a schedule in your box uh, we gave a schedule to the vendors uh, Miss Sprayberry and Miss Jones had an opportunity to visit our and be a part of our health fair uh, we gave out a packet uh, to each vendor that gives them a schedule as well as lunch break and what we're going to do during the lunch break um, if they have any questions this is you know this is everything that you need to know uh, with the day and also we included a evaluation sheet at the end of that packet uh, teachers had a separate packet where we had one list that says these are the students that's going to be out of your class for today these are the times that they will be returning back to class if they will be returning back to class. Um, they had a, um, a sheet of paper for um, what they needed to know about today and everything. And then for the students, we had a survey where we allowed them to complete a survey about how can we better our health fair. Vendors had theirs, visitors had theirs, teachers had theirs, because we want to make it successful and even better each year uh, as it goes on. And so. Um, I think that's about it, but we, we really enjoyed it. Um, I enjoy doing health fairs, and I enjoy being part of Focus, but I just wanted to say that, you know, if you have great 
students, you won't have to do it all. They'll do it for you. <laughs> yes, and, and he did such a good job. But he had, he had all the students working. And uh, Ms. Robin was working too. I mean, everybody was a part. And the principals, they were in there like, I did this. You should have seen them. I mean, they were so proud. They were. They were shaking hands and, you know, it was like I had worked on this all year. So they were very, very proud of Xavius, as were all of us. And so um, I was so proud. I had a poster made. Look at, look at Xavius. I took him everywhere I went this year, <laughs> along with Ada Ruth Huntley and Olivia Depew. They're all outstanding focus members um, and presidents. Um, but do you have any questions for Xavius or for Deborah before we move on? Um, with the health fair, um, the students, they all had a schedule. Um, I would uh, stay up late at night. <laughs> I could tell, you can ask Ms. Winton, I would stay up late at night. And she would be like, Xavius, if there's anything I need to do, let me know. Uh, you need to go to bed at night. And so um, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, would get all the students' names. Uh, and we also partnered with our health classes. And that's one thing. Uh, in Talladega County, we have an uh, initiative called PBL Project Based Learning. Um, where we um, allow collaboration, working together with students and groups and small groups. And so we did partner with our health classes, and they did do presentations where their parents could come in and you know, see those presentations. But with our focus uh, members and even volunteers that wanted to help out, um, we were able to make a schedule um, throughout the day. Um, and there was a time where they, either they were working or if their grade level was in at that time, and they had that opportunity to go around the health fair. Um, because the first year we had it, I was not able to go around because I'm just going here, 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 and there. And so this year, we were able to get a student schedule and give them a packet as well with the schedule of um, the times of different groups that are coming in and also let them know that this student needs to be here, this student needs to be there. Uh, just basically a schedule of duties, like you know, your teachers have a schedule that you're principals give you. So uh, we did do that for the students so they know this is what I need to be doing at this time. If I need to be at the sign-in table, sign-out table, walking around with the vendors or, you know, in the front, parking lot duty, vendor duty. And so we had, we had it to the T. And I tell you, that red notebook, it is the deal. Use it. <laughs> Um, she had asked how, when, I, when we first started, how we got vendors um, together. Um, you would just have to know who I am in my community. <laughs> <laughs> I am a well-known uh, young person in my community because I'm always out in the community, so I, I kind of know people, just like, oh, I know these people. And so, um, but some of the things that we did was, um, before Ms. Whittington came with our other uh, counselors, she, we sat down with the members and we said, what community organizations that we want to come out? And also, Talladega County Schools are a one-to-one -one initiative county where we have map books, Chromebooks. Um, we use that resource, Google, searching up um, prevention organizations. Um, we do have a hospital, Coosa Valley Medical Center, which was one of our um, greatest supporters. Uh, my first year, they did blood pressure, eyesight, weight, height, anything you can think of um, with health um, things related like that. And what I've done was from that first year, we constantly kept a database of all vendors. Um, so each year, we won't have to struggle and be like, okay, we need vendors. So now we have this document that we can use year after year after year with their name, address, phone number, email, what they did, how many tables they brought, how many tables they'll need. And so it's, it was that, it was like, we need to prepare for next year. And so my mindset was always looking forward to the future. And there was like, you need to worry about graduating. I'm just like, I'm worried about y'all for next year. <laughs> and so we got that document set. And now uh, they have like over 
20, 30 vendors for next year. And even if they more organizations they find, they'll even have more. Um, even through the focus rally, that's where we got most of our vendors um, because they have a health fair. And so we get to meet with people through the focus rally. And that gives us, you know, people to pull from that we didn't have before. And this year, we didn't have enough room for almost everybody. <laughs> so, because we had, we had to split everybody up and we were like, we have to move tables out the way. We're like, okay, we're going to put you here. And it's just like, whew, I don't know how big we're going to have it. But um, we even had people that, you know, we're just going to have vendors outside uh, and vehicles and have great things. Um, so, uh, it's all about who you know and how to get in contact and even attending the focus rally um, because that'll be a great help um, with the health fair from the focus rally. they kind of know and expect or whatever but you really won't get the answers until you call and that's what was a huge benefit for me with focus with having the students leading it so much is I didn't have to make all those calls we had a meeting we had a focus meeting and everybody had a list of who they were going to call and we split up they had their cell phones and they split up around the library and they made the calls um, so to to the vendors that we wanted to invite mm -hmm. so I, I honestly I mean I only had to talk to them when they called the school back saying I got this message you know if they had to if the kids had to leave a message um, or if they wanted to confirm or get more information those were the calls I dealt with I didn't make the first call the kids all did that so they it was their responsibility to call and invite so it's basically you sit down first make your list of, of um, you know potential vendors and then just break it up and let the kids help you call um, to those vendors but the letters are, are informative and kind of give them what's going on or what to expect but the phone calls are where you're going to get your answers okay we're done Um, our first year, because it was our, we were new at this, uh, we did do it from 8.30 to 12. This past year, because BB Coleman High School is a 7 through 12 uh, school, and then it's depending on the size of the school. Um, last year, we had about 500 and something. This past year, we had 400 and 440. So the size kind, kind of shrunk. And so last year we gave them 30 minute intervals and then five minutes to get back to class. Uh, this year, since you know it's kind of shrunk down and then depending on the grade size, we started with the seniors, juniors because of co-op or uh, having to go to trade school. And so we're having to keep all these other extracurricular things in mind um, with planning the time interval. Um, this year we were able to allot them 45 minutes because we had even more vendors, so we wanted them to have more, more time to go to the different vendors and then another five minutes to get back to class. Uh, we said leave everything in class, come straight to the health fair, use the bathroom before you get in because you're trying to use the bathroom and you, you're going to miss everything in that 45 minutes. And, and then those precious seventh and eighth graders, they're coming in in the door, they got to sign in and they got to go to another sign-in table from Coosa Valley and then they're coming in and it's like, all right, let's go around. There are other vendors that are here. They're just looking at us. So come on around and come back when you get done with those other tables. So um, it, it was pretty nice. Time intervals is just depending on the size, uh, how big is the gym, um, and how you're utilizing uh, the flow of the uh, health fair as well. So. Um, now, we did do seventh grade by themselves. Uh, last year, we did seventh and eighth grade together because, and it's also with the scheduling of the school as well because the year, last year, we were on a block schedule. We had A day, B day, and skinny day. This year, uh, that schedule was like, I forgot how it was, but it was different from this year. This year, we had A day, B day, one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. And next year, they're going to have all seven days. <laughs> and so it's going to, 
that's what it was. We were on an all seven day period. And so we had to work that in with the scheduling of the school uh, with timing and also include lunch time in there. So it's a lot of figuring out time, um, where people need to be at this certain time, and then what school, that sounds like rain. <laughs> um, we always did seven and eighth grade because they're the first to go to lunch. And so when they're the first to go to lunch, then after lunch, we'll bring seven and eighth grade in uh, all together. But this year we brought seventh grade in by themselves because uh, our seventh graders are, has a bigger or smaller class than the eighth graders was. So we just went ahead and put them uh, in separate orders. So. I'm going to add a little bit to what Xavier said. Um, at Sylacauga, we're on block schedule. So we did, we had four periods. So we would do like, if we started with the sophomores at first block, we'd do A through L, bring them in, then M through Z. So kind of split each grade in half. So you're not getting the whole class in there at the same time. Because it can get pretty, the line's long, like he's saying, you're, you're roping them in, you know, y'all keep moving, y'all keep moving. Uh, but that partnership with your local hospital or clinic is vital because they, they did the whole vital statistics half of the gym and then your vendors are on the other half where they're gaining good information. So great organization, um, but it'll depend on your school setting, your bell schedule, how you want to, how you can run it. We did it all day at Sylacauga. It took the whole day to get everybody in and out and we gave each student a ticket. So they only got to come in once. I, the first year we ever did it, we had kids coming two and three times was that they go to fourth block and say, I didn't get to go first period. My teacher wouldn't let me go. Well, honey, just go on. So, you know, we learned they get a ticket, that gets them in one time. So, you know, but all this, like he has said, that red implementation, implementation guide, which is on the website, is got everything in there you would ever need. What do y'all think about a high school senior organizing a project like that? And it can be done. It can be done. Uh, I will have to say, he says I'm well known in the community. He didn't, he failed to tell you, his, his name is Xavius Kidd. He is the kid preacher. He preaches in churches. Do you have your own church? I am a pastor-elect. I will be ordained as a pastor in September. Uh, I will be a youth pastor soon to be a pastor. All right, all right. Yeah. All right. Um, excellent. And, and two, uh, Xavius is going to be a focused intern this year as a Jacksonville State University student. He'll be, hopefully, if his schedule permits, at all three of our rallies and then doing some speaking engagements for us. And also, I'm not going to put him on the spot right now and volunteer him because it's going to depend on academics first. <laughs> But if you need to get in touch with Xavius, if you'll get in touch with Deborah or Carol or me, we will try to, if y'all want to let some of your, your student leader talk to him or anything, you know, we'll try to set up some calls and I'll help y'all get organized and Xavius uh, will be able to do that for you. Okay, we're going to move right along now. We have a short section and, you know, I'm going to go through this rather quickly because um, as we've talked today off the cuff, so to speak, we've covered a lot of this. But I just, there were some things that I thought I, I need to make sure I cover and that they know. I never have sat down with an administrator that one of the first questions that they asked when we talked about focus, well, is it evidence-based? Is it research-based? And the answer to that is yes, um, it is. A lot of the components of what we do have been researched extensively. Peer helping, y'all know the research on peer helping and the, how effective it is in prevention of risk behaviors. Another component of focus that we're going to talk about next is community service. You know how important that is. I mean, even if you commit a crime, you're, you've got to do community service. I mean, that is so effective. You know, it really is. And so a common, <laughs> a common thread in most prevention programs that have been proven successful is peer helping and community service. So yes, we are evidence-based, those two things. But we've also been evaluated through the University of Alabama and they, that whole, the whole evaluation is on our website. So you'll be able to look at that if you so desire. I, I, we plug this all day long, but I, and you've got in your folders, you have a card with these dates on the back, but I would like to encourage you to start planning immediately if you haven't already, to attend one of these events. 
Uh, in 2018, we plan to have an event in North Alabama. Uh, we're going to be in the Madison County, Morgan County, Coleman County, probably Madison County for those schools that live up that area. But this year we have three, so we would like to invite all of our North Alabama schools to either Talladega or to the University of Alabama. And uh, I think you'll, your students will learn more about focus there and really get motivated to see other kids around the state doing the same things that they're doing. Uh, you do have to pay your own travel, and that's a, that's a real barrier to a lot of people getting there. But if you have your health fair, you can even sell items at your health fair like bottled healthy things, like bottled water or fruit, that sort of thing. Or you could even sell, I don't know what, what you would want to sell. You could have any kind of thing at that health fair. And that, if you can raise enough money that you can pay for your bus, then each student can just pay for the health fair, and that's $25. And if you'll let them know when school starts, you can go ahead and collect it. When school starts, when, they're, when the parents are up there, okay, how much do I owe? Okay, locker, lab fee, you know how that is. And then if you come back two weeks later and say, focus, they're going to say, uh, -uh not going to do it. But if you do it right when they're bringing all their other fees in, if you go back to your administrator or on day one, you got a $25 focus fee, if you have your parents' night, something like that, you can set up a table. We'll be glad, if, if at all possible, to get you our vertical banner and a tablecloth, and you can promote focus to your community and to your parents at your parents' night. And if you want to do something there to raise money, you know you can, and to pay for that bus. All right. Uh, the next, the next thing that, um, that we've already mentioned, Deborah mentioned it, the focus zone, we do have that logo available. And so uh, make sure that if, that if you have one, that you use that on all your uh, marketing items. All students will be scheduled to go to the focus zone at the rally. And when you're planning your uh, focus zone at your own school, make sure you invite Alabama uh, Army National Guard. They will bring so many giveaways. That, yeah, they got money. They will bring so many giveaways. They will bring different things for your students. Do they have a push-up contest that the kids love? And those soldiers in their uniforms, and they give prizes. They give duffel bags and T-shirts and all that sort of thing to your students. Every county has, uh, every area has a National Guard. To, to your health fair. The Alabama Army National Guard, and you can just find that on, you can Google that and find it. Yeah, they'll bring the climbing wall, they'll bring a gladiator pit, uh, they'll have a, a, an exhibit, like I said, where they'll do the push-up contests, and they have all kinds of good stuff. They, it's very, very interactive. One thing that I haven't talked about, we did talk extensively about implementing focus as an extracurricular, but we do have schools across the state that are implementing focus as an elective class, and that is perfect. Amanda, I, I hadn't called on her, she's from Daphne. She has focus as the elective class, and um, I'm not gonna make her say anything because I hadn't even t told her, but I think that that is the ideal situation. We would love for every school to have the elective class. You have time to do your peer helping training, you have time to plan your health fair. You have time to do your bulletin boards. You have all that. And we also have in our um, implementation guide what we call a matrix. You can do all your focus group training and everything, but then once you get all the kids trained, then Monday you do this, Tuesday you do this. And we, you, know, you can even do tutoring. With, you can use your peer leaders and your focus students to do tutoring to lower grades or even to their, their peers. But new for 217-18, well, let me ma mention the course codes. We do have course codes, and that peer helping goes all the way down to sixth grade. Um, but the health education elective is, uh, your counselors can use that too. But we're offering the elective, and I mentioned this this morning, it's the Health Smart curriculum, um, and it is going to be um, in Bessemer City Schools for all sixth graders this year. And we would love to work with you if you can get it implemented in middle school. And there is a high school curriculum too, but usually we implement that in middle school. Okay. Uh, we do have a lot of free resources. I wish I could just give you a lot of marketing items. Like today we're gonna give you the umbrellas, we're gonna give you the cups where you, you know, you've got your notebooks. 
pens. I wish I had enough of those just to give out to everybody, but we don't. But we can tap into ADPH to get a lot of free materials for you. And uh, so be sure to do that. Can I ask you something? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And if you want to write a grant, you can get these, this curriculum paid for. Yes. Yes. Uh, in fact, Bessemer bought their own through a uh, Dollar General grant. They bought their own curriculum that they got through Dollar General. Carol mentioned this morning uh, about uh, us going in a new direction. Um, Amanda, I'm going to pick on you again. Amanda's got a great focus program at her school. And I, she, I, she sends me pictures sometimes, and I kind of follow her. And I said, why didn't you apply for Focus Go of the Year? Because she didn't apply. And she said, well, you know what? And she was telling me why. And the bottom line is, we're so busy doing Focus, the deadline passed. And we don't have time. And I've heard that from so many people. Some of our best schools in the state. Xavius didn't apply for Focus Go of the Year. It wasn't your job, <laughs> but he didn't. And so we're saying, what can we do different? So here's what we're going to do. We're not, we, we look back through it, and we thought, maybe it takes too much time. You know, you have to document all year, and it takes too much time. So here's what we've decided to do. We are going to have a difference maker this year instead of Focus School of the Year. But this Focus School is going to be recognized as well. But the award is called the Difference Maker, and it's going to be one of you. And you're going to be given the $1,000 to use as you want, not for vacation, because you'll get it on the last day of school. You, you can use it for whatever you want to. It doesn't have, before we stipulated, it had to be used for prevention efforts in your school. But you can use it as you please. And we will come to your award, and we're going to have nominations. We're, we're promoting this at the rally. We're asking students to nominate their facilitators. We're going through the class. Uh, Council for Leaders in Alabama School, the principal's asking them to nominate. So we're really promoting this to get nominations. So anyone that's nominated will receive a letter letting you know that you have been nominated. You don't have to nominate yourself. We're seeking nominations. And then when you're nominated, then we will call and interview you and get some information. You won't have to fill out, you know, like Teacher of the Year. You won't have to fill out. How many of you just never applied for that when you got nominated? <laughs> Probably a lot of you, yeah. So, you know, we will interview you and get your information, interview whoever nominated you, and then we will come to your awards day program at the end of the year. One of us on the staff will come, and we will recognize your focus program and you with money, a large mock check, a trophy, um, a certificate to be framed in your school and give you that recognition. And I will have to credit where credit's due. The whole staff talked about this, and we, and including the two that aren't here today, and we just decided we needed to come up with something new and different. We've been doing Focus School of the Year for many years, and so we came up with that, and Tom, I was sharing it with Tom, and Tom said, yeah, let's call it the Difference Maker. So Tom came up with that name, and I loved it. So the Difference Maker Award with a $1,000 cash prize. So hopefully we'll be in one of your schools this year. I've already given that out earlier today. That's the character education quotes and lesson plans that we've already done. And we've talked about our partners with the exception of two. Um, well, I didn't say Coke. Coke donates Dasani water for our rallies and we give out water in our focus zone to the kids. But um, the Alabama Campaign to Prevent Teen Pregnancy is a, is a strong uh, collaborative partner with FOCUS. And one of the projects that we have going on this next year, and it is called the po Public Policy Project. And what we're trying to do is to get people to advocate for comprehensive, medically accurate sex education in our schools so we can get, we might be the Bible Belt, but we don't want to be the STI belt and the teen pregnancy belt and the HIV belt. We want to get that off. So we're not ever going to do that until we can get uh, comprehensive, age-appropriate sex education. Um, so I work with that group, and one of the things that they've done, it's a collaborative partner with FOCUS, the Alabama Campaign to Prevent Teen Pregnancy, University of South Alabama, 
and the University of Alabama in Birmingham. Those are the four collaborative partners. Our role is to provide information from students. And so we're going to be conducting focus group breakout sessions at all three of our rallies. And so we're going to f talk to, your, to students that are there, not every student, but a group of students at every rally to talk to them. And that's going to be a part of this project. Um, and hopefully, we'll get some valid data to present to the State Board of Education to let them see. Because they always say, oh, parents will get mad. We can't talk about that. And that's not true. I mean, there might be one or two, but 98% of them want uh, their students to be educated. So we're going to hopefully get some really good information. Uh, Jacksonville uh, High School, Amy McCreelis that, that I picked on earlier today, she and her students will be conducting the focus groups at the uh, Talladega Rally at Chaco. Uh, in Tuscaloosa, Hewitt Trustful High School, Dana DePew will be conducting those focus groups with her students, and she's the school nurse. Uh, at uh, Andalusia, we're working with the uh, Wallace Community College. I think is what it's called, Wallace Community College, and their health science students are going to be doing it. So we have some junior college students that are going to do that.